As the Zika virus continues to spread through the Americas, and with hundreds of imported cases here in the United States, here's what everyone needs to know about the virus and their risk. At the end of the video I show you what you should do to protect yourself. Welcome to Lifestyle Therapy Channel, stay tuned. Why is there no treatment for Zika? There are no approved drugs or vaccines for Zika, mainly because scientists long assumed the virus was so benign that it wasn't worth the resources required to investigate treatment. Zika has not been widely examined, and while some early research noted that the virus could infect brain cells, the connection between Zika and microcephaly, a severe neurological birth defect, is relatively new. Even now, many people who get infected will never know it, and if they start showing signs of infection, such as a rash, red eyes, fever or joint pain, doctors have little to offer other than advice to stay hydrated or take Tylenol as needed. Vaccine development is underway at the National Institutes of Health. Scientists are tweaking a vaccine that was initially developed for the West Nile virus. The need for a drug is less compelling than the need for a vaccine, says Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the NIH. Since Zika is an infection that in most people is usually gone within a few days, it may be tough to have an impact with a drug as opposed to prevention, with a vaccine. How can I find out if I have it? Right now there are no commercial diagnostic tests for Zika, so unless you're pregnant or are a traveler with symptoms, your doctor may not test you. That's because of the high volume of blood samples already waiting to be tested, which right now can be done only by state and federal health authorities. Getting results can take weeks, and tests for people who have traveled to Zika affected areas but do not have symptoms will likely be considered low priority. An exception is pregnant women who have traveled to one of the 44 countries where Zika has spread, all of them should be tested, according to the CDC. For each test, a doctor will send a sample to a state or federal lab. There's also a test that looks for antibodies in blood that show whether a person's immune system has ever fought the virus, but it's imperfect, it can mistake Zika for similar viruses like dengue and chikungunya. Who is most at risk? Pregnant women who live in or have traveled to Zika infested regions are vulnerable to the most serious complications from the virus, birth defects. Zika can also be transmitted through sex, though, which spreads the risk of infection to the bedroom. People living in southern states and Hawaii where the climate, geography and the presence of a Egypti mosquitoes make eventual local transmission likely are not currently at higher risk of getting the virus in their home states, according to the CDC. The one exception is that if their partner has been traveling to an area of Zika transmission, there is a risk of sexual transmission, says Margaret Hahn, chief of the CDC's birth defects branch. Over time that risk may be enough to encourage US women of childbearing age to consider using birth control. If I'm pregnant and I get Zika, what should I do? Pregnant women with Zika should get more frequent ultrasounds, which is the only reliable way to detect microcephaly before a baby is born. The birth defect often cannot be identified until the second trimester, which means that for now, Many couples will have to make decisions about their pregnancy with incomplete information. The question of should I consider an abortion because of the potential effects on a baby from a variety of exposures is not new, but I think this outbreak is re-raising it, says Dr. Richard Peggy, chief medical officer at McGee Women's Hospital of the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center babies with microcephaly can cost up to two million dollars to raise in the first few years of life, though many may not live that long. What should I do to protect myself? Cover up and use bug spray, for starters. Preventing mosquito bites is the best way to prevent Zika, and while that may seem obvious, it can take some work. 
If you're in an area with disease spreading mosquitoes, wear long sleeved shirts and pants. No matter how warm it is, mosquitoes are more infectious when the mercury rises. Then, according to the CDC, use insect repellents that contain one of the following ingredients, DEET, 20% to 30% concentration is best, according to the CDC, picaridin, oil of lemon eucalyptus, paramenthane diol or IR 3535. You should also make sure windows have screens, and the air conditioner is on. If you're home during the day, the mosquitoes that spread Zika are day biters. And since a mosquito needs only a tiny bottle cap size pool of water to lay as many as 200 eggs, you should remove any standing water around your home, and clean any vessels you find. Because even after the water source has dried out, the eggs can remain dormant and survive for months, sometimes even up to a year, on the inside of a container. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and tap the bell to get notified about all new videos from Lifestyle Therapy. You can also watch the other videos on the channel. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like it, and share it and tell us your opinion in the comments. Thank you, and see you soon.